Wagwan beautiful souls, it's Marcia C. And welcome back to another episode of Her Sacred Soul Space. So here's the deal, soul seekers. This week, as I was contemplating what is it I should talk about on this episode, I found myself um, being in, in a frenzy, I may say. I was in a space of having several thoughts, several ideas surface in my mind, but nothing was was sticking to my soul plate. Nothing was giving me that ha-ha sensation or even that body shiver confirmation that I will get whenever I am in alignment with spirit and what spirit wants me to do. And so I decided to take a minute, just take a minute to breathe and to be quiet. And there it was. There it became even more profound and loud. Talk about life lessons. I've heard it when the other thoughts were surfaced in my mind, but obviously I dismissed it. And it came back in such a soft yet profound manner. Talk about life lessons. And if there's one thing that I know, soul keepers, soul seekers and keepers, (laughs) um, is that I know Several times I've tried to run, but I definitely couldn't hide. So on this episode, it's all about her life lessons. The smallest things, the smallest connections that all come together to create such a bigger picture of how we see ourselves and how we apply those lessons in our lives so that we can become even more of a better version of who we are. So both before we get deep, before we go deep into our conversation, you know, we love to center here on Her Sacred Soul Space, and we're going to do so by taking three deep breaths. And this is just a deep, deep breathing of appreciation, a breathing of gratitude and appreciation for the life lessons that we all have encountered in one shape or form. So let's take a deep breath in. And allow the energy to circulate and you exhale. And on our second breath, we're given gratitude for the lessons, gratitude for this space, gratitude for you being able to be here viewing this episode. And on our final breath, we're just going to be present. And just be present. And exhale. So Seekers, one of my favorite, favorite pastime activity is to just basically curl up on the couch and watch a good movie on Netflix. And I know I am not the only one who loves to do that. Just just chilling, doing nothing, enjoying your time, your moment, and watching a movie. Sounds good, right? (laughs) Yes, I love to do so. And recently I was watching a movie that had a line in it that just stood out to me. And it was, time is a gift. Now, I found myself just like being in awe of, of those words. Aspects of my life started to just flow right in front of me. Moments when I've given pieces of myself away to others that were not deserving of it. You know, my energy that I use to to and focus on other things that is not even deserving of my energy. Having thought patterns within me that is not serving me. All this flashed before my eyes and left me wondering, left me pondering, Do you see your time as a gift? And are you acting in accordance with that? So here I am posing that same question to you. Do you see your time as a gift? And how are you operating in the lessons, the life lessons that come about through your time? How are you applying it in your life and encouraging others to do the same? I have shared openly that in the past I was a people pleaser and I live a life of someone who blindedly believed that happiness resides in others and not within myself. 
It was so bad that I would ask for approval for everything, even the smallest things. I felt like I didn't have control of my life. I didn't know that even by my asking for approval or opinion on even the smallest things that I was openly and willingly giving away pieces of my soul away, giving away my light, doubting who I am. I found myself dancing in the vibrations of self-doubt, self-sabotage, and not even knowing that I was doing so. I was so quick to point a finger at someone else for making my life feel less than. I solely rely on the expectations of others in order for me to see my accomplishments. (laughs) Crazy, right? But if there's one thing I know for sure, I did not like that feeling. I did not like the feeling of being lost, It made me feel weak and I just wanted to be happy. I just wanted it all to go away. So here I am figuring that if I found happiness, everything would absolutely fall into place. Well, at least that's what I thought. So here I am sharing with you some of the lessons I garnered on my journey defining happiness. Choosing to pursue a new path but still carrying the same vibration will only result in a harder lesson. Point blank, period. What do you mean by that, Marcia? Simply, simple, simple, simple. I cannot carry the same energy on my back when I'm trying to cross over, cross to another lifestyle or cross into another version of who I am, but yet still carrying certain thought patterns, certain vibrational frequency with me as if I'm afraid of letting it go. I need some form of comfort as I go into the next version of who I am, as I continue to grow. I had to find that because of the facade I was creating in my mind, I basically only choose to see the temporary feel-good vibrations. So even when I'm supposed to recognize that I'm still carrying an old energy or old vibration with me, I was quick to dismiss it and focus on only the feel-good vibration. And those feel-good vibration typically involved another person, specifically a person of interest. And little did I know that I still had that energy of needing another person to create happiness, that happiness that I was searching for. It took me quite some time to figure out that I had to change my mindset and the thoughts and that I was actually giving my power away. I had to learn to broaden my scope of how I view myself. And this included getting to know myself and the fears associated with my needing someone else's opinion or someone else to cultivate my happiness. I started asking myself, am I giving more than I'm receiving just to pretend that this is where happiness begins or even what it looks like? I had to start paying attention to the signs. We live in a world where influences come from various angles. And if we're not careful, we would find ourselves gravitating or being pulled in so many directions, thinking this is my happy place. After all, it works for others, so why can't it work for me? Not recognizing or realizing that what others may find happiness in may not serve my soul. So once again, I was going outside of me to find happiness based on someone else's happiness. And I had to figure out what does all that really mean in that way? Am I not deserving of all that? What is all that when it comes on to happiness? I had to start understanding how I can find happiness in my way. What are the signs and how are they leading me to discover that about myself, to discover where my happiness truly lies? You know, I love to share my stories. <laughs> I do. Had, okay, so I have a quick one for you. You know, when I was at Mercer University, it's during that time frame that I started tapping into my gift or even learning to understand. And one of the way that God showed up for me was through my dreams. And he led me to a beautiful soul 
that was in a communication class with me, we developed a relationship based on the fact that God sent me to her to interpret my dreams. Now, fast forward years later, I woke up one morning um, with her in my spirit. So, you know, I just do the little check-in. Hey girl, you were in my spirit, just checking in. Hope all is well um, and that you're doing good. Be safe and sending you lots of love and light. You know, all of that came from my heart because that's how I felt and that's what I wanted to share with her. And whenever individuals come in my spirit, I normally tend to do that. If it's not a text, I'm still saying, I'm still sending those energy to you. I'm still saying a prayer for you. So like two days later, 6.30 a.m., mind you, I got a call from her. And in that moment, I recognized that the connection I received days before was even bigger than what I thought. Because now, once again, God was using her as a vessel for me. And during that time, she said to me that you should pray for joy and not happiness. And she went on to say some other stuff, but I just, I couldn't move past, you should pray for joy, but not happiness. I didn't understand. For in my mind, I'm like, aren't they like similar anyways? Don't they produce the same result, the same vibration? As I continue to remain in receiving mode as she spoke, I wanted to understand even more as to why joy was more of the vibration that I needed to be on and not so much of happiness. I had to learn to make the shift before even doing so or taking the action to make the shift. I had to ask myself, what is the difference between the happiness that I was seeking versus the joy that is the required vibration that I need to have? As I continue to rediscover how to love myself from a non-judgmental space, especially after breast cancer, as I continue to understand and trust my intuition, meaning stop asking everybody for approval, knowing that I have the answer within me. And as I continue to connect with myself, embracing how to make decision from a space of love and not from a space of fear, I started to understand the vitality of having joy as my foundation. I realized having joy becomes the strength of who I am. It's the aspect of me that is created through my connection with God, through my connection with the divine. It is the root to my soul that will produce the happiness that I was searching for, the happiness that I'm deserving of as I continue on the path of self-discovery and fulfillment. I realize that my joy is the frequency that will enable my magic, my light to shine. But most importantly, I love the fact that my joy was absolutely mine. No one else's. It was mine. And I felt safe knowing that. I felt safe knowing that I had no expectations of others for me, nor did I need others to help me to find this joy. It was my reminder that my time is a gift And I had to value it as such. I had to value my time as a gift. I had to recognize how do I show up? And what do I ask for when I show up? And make sure what I'm asking for is what indeed is gonna serve me and not gonna give me a temporary fix. So in my research of trying to understand more of joy and happiness, I encountered some statements that I thought was pretty awesome and pretty cool that I want to share with you and how you'll be able to see the difference between joy and happiness. The difference between joy and happiness lives in the mind and the heart. Joy is a little word. Happiness is a big word. (laughs) Joy is the heart. Happiness is what's on the face. Joy is the soul. Happiness is of the moment. Joy transcends. Happiness reacts. Joy embraces peace and contentment waiting to be discovered. Joy runs deep and overflows while happiness hugs hello. 
joy is a practice and a behavior. It's deliberate and intentional. Joy is an inner feeling. Happiness is an outward expression. Joy endures hardship and trials and connects with meaning and purpose. I encourage you to choose joy, practice joy, know joy, live joy, so you can feel that happiness that you solely deserve. So today I affirm, I am deserving of joy. I am joy. And I affirm, you are deserving of joy. You are joy. I encourage you to say this daily, at least for a week, just so you can get into that rhythm and that vibration of understanding the importance of joy. And that once you have that foundation, your happiness will come. Remember, see your light, be your light, live an intentional through experience. Until then, one love. <laughs>